Functional groups are parts of molecules with different chemical properties that will change the function of the overall molecule. We can look at them as a formula, drawn out structurally, or visualized as a molecular model or space filling model. No matter how you look at them, their behavior remains the same, and it's based on whether their bonds are polar covalent or nonpolar covalent. So let's review the difference. Electronegativity measures the pull of electrons that that nucleus has. Atoms with relatively similar electronegativities form nonpolar covalent bonds, like carbon and hydrogen. If their pull on electrons is different, they won't share electrons equally, and they will form a polar covalent bond. Water, made of hydrogen and oxygen, is an excellent example of this unequal sharing. Carbon and nitrogen are also close enough to share equally. Carbon and, or nitrogen and hydrogen also do not share equally. So you're gonna see polar covalent bonds between H and O and H and N, whereas you'll see covalent nonpolar covalent bonds between carbon and hydrogen and carbon and nitrogen. And just a reminder, the bigger the number, the more electronegative. So they're gonna have more pull on those electrons, more attractive force, and those are the atoms you're going to see be more negative within the molecule. So here's a close-up of water, and you can see I've added these little like squiggly looking Ds to the molecule that stands for dipole. So we're just talking about the fact that this molecule has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. And overall, the molecule is neutral. It has no charge, but you can see I've shaded to show you that the electrons spend more time near the oxygen. Okay, so let's see if I can show you this. So. Because water has a slight positive charge, it can be attracted to negative ions like chloride. And since it has a negative, sorry, not a charge, but a negative region, it can be attracted to ions that are positive like sodium. And see how it's facing. The oxygen is facing the positive atom. The hydrogen is facing the negative atom. Oxygens can also orient themselves to stick to each other. And again, let me see if I can grab these and move them. Um, so mm, I need to wiggle things around a bit. So they can kind of align themselves. Now, again, they're moving and I just kind of moved one of the dipoles. Whoops, a daisy. Bring that back to the hydrogen. So there will be attractions that form and those attractions are called hydrogen bonds and they're typically shown with dotted lines dotted or dashed lines so you can see here we have a couple hydrogen bonds forming between these water molecules since water is polar it interacts with all other polar things it also interacts with ionic or charged molecules so we call polar molecules and ions hydrophilic or water-loving molecules. They are also water-soluble. Nonpolar molecules are excluded by water and by other polar molecules. For that reason, we call nonpolar things hydrophobic. Since biological molecules are based around a carbon skeleton, the functional groups are attached to that carbon skeleton and we often visualize the carbon skeleton with a placeholder, and that placeholder is a capital letter R. R stands for the remainder of the molecule. I think of it as the rest of the molecule. All the functional groups I'm going to show you will be bound with a covalent bond to an R group. In reality, our groups that I'm showing you could be a single carbon atom with hydrogens or many, many carbon atoms, sometimes upwards of 20 is possible. But in living things, often three to five is reasonable for something small like a monomer. So for example, this ROH could represent a single carbon, three carbons, or a large carbon chain, which we, you know, because that's a lot of carbons and hydrogens, we draw this shorthand where every point 
is a carbon. And so that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons there attached to the OH group. I'm going to show you all the functional groups that we're going to concern ourselves with in biology. And then I'll summarize their properties on another slide. And along the way, I'll give you some examples of ways they interact in living systems. This is a hydroxyl group. Sometimes it's called an alcohol group, and you will see it in alcohols like methanol or ethanol if the R group is very simple and just a few carbons and hydrogens. This is a methyl group. They are very common in living systems, and since living systems are primarily carbon and hydrogen, um, they're also a nonpolar group. Uh, most of the groups we're going to look at today are polar. This is the rare nonpolar exception. This is a carbonyl group. Carbonyl groups can be aldehydes or ketones, depending on if they're in the middle of the molecule or the end. And they're often attached to very long carbon chains. Um, so not, our car not all carbonyl groups um, make the entire molecule polar, even though it is a carbon bound to an oxygen. Um, that long hydrocarbon chain with lots of carbons and hydrogens can make the overall molecule fairly nonpolar. Um, so these aren't the most water soluble, but things like formaldehyde includes a carbonyl group. And if those R groups are small, this will make the whole molecule become behave in a polar way because it is technically a polar group. This is a carboxyl group. You'll see these a lot in biology. In a living system, carboxyl groups tend to pull so strongly on their electrons that in a solution, they ionize and release their hydrogen ion to become negatively charged. Things that release hydrogen ions in a solution are also considered acids, so sometimes we call this the acidic group. So amino acids and fatty acids have this functional group. This is an amino group. It can also exist as a charged or ionic form, but instead of giving off a hydrogen, it attracts a hydrogen ion um, to form a positive ionic group. Um, and because it pulls that hydrogen out of solution, it's considered a basic group. So it makes the solution less acidic. This is a phosphate group. These are especially important in nucleic acids like ATP and nucleotides, the building blocks of things like DNA. They also release hydrogen ions into solution and are considered acidic. DNA does stand for deoxyribonucleic acid after all. This is a sulfhydryl group. It's polar. You're not going to see these often in biology, but they're really important to a special kind of covalent bond that happens in proteins called disulfide bridges that form between two sulfhydryl groups of two different amino acids within, generally within one protein. And finally, here's our summary of polar, nonpolar, ionic or charged, basic and acidic functional groups. Note that all charged and polar molecules are hydrophilic, and they're going to mix well with water in a solution. So our nonpolar groups like methyl groups, or you'll see in fatty acids, we have long hydrocarbon chains of carbons and hydrogens. Those are all nonpolar, so they're going to be able to act kind of as barriers between water-loving things and the water-fearing things. Hope this was helpful. Functional groups can be a little persnickety. Keep at it. You will get them. Hope this helps.